believe nowadays that we, we should enjoy our food immensely. And we feel gypped if we don't, quote unquote, enjoy our food. We've come to expect that we get, um, yeah, a lot of enjoyment out of food. And mm-hmm. in fact, that's really the primary reason why people eat. Certainly, I, I rarely get hungry. I mostly eat for pleasure. Um, because I never let myself get hungry. Can you talk about this concept of the palatable food and what that does to us and why that makes us overeat and perhaps um, add to our obesity? Yeah, absolutely. So essentially there are certain things that the brain is looking for in food on a very basic instinctual level. So our brains are hardwired to seek certain physical and chemical properties in food. And this is true for humans, it's true for rats, it's true for a variety of different species. Essentially, when we eat foods that contain carbohydrate, fat, protein, salt, and the um, compound glutamate, which is an amino acid that tastes kind of meaty, it's the meaty flavor in MSG and soy sauce and bone broth, those things cause dopamine release in the brain and dopamine is a key chemical that causes us to be motivated and causes us to learn to be motivated by specific things and so when you eat foods that have high concentrations of these dopamine releasing substances that tells your brain this is really good stuff you're you're literally hardwired in your gut and your brain to detect those substances and trigger a motivational response in your brain and so Um, When you eat those foods, it creates and reinforces the motivation to consume them. And along with that comes pleasure. So we're driven to eat certain types of foods and we enjoy eating those foods. And so this is a motivational drive that essentially over the course of human history, we have increasingly enhanced. And so um, I like to draw an analogy with cocaine. So originally cocaine was found only in the coca plant which is a plant traditionally that was used well to this day still is used as a mild stimulant in south america they take the leaves they chew on it with a little bit of lime and it's like drinking a cup of coffee however if you then bring in technology and you start purifying out the cocaine then suddenly it's an addictive drug If you then further process it into crack cocaine so that it can cross your cell membranes more quickly, give you a quicker, stronger high, then suddenly it turns into a life-destroying drug. And so basically through technological progress, and what I forgot to mention is that cocaine increases dopamine levels in the brain to an extreme degree. So throughout the progress of technology, We have essentially purified the active ingredient in the coca plant that releases dopamine in our brains um, and causes us to, you know, want to consume that substance and to enjoy consuming that substance. And so, you know, food is, I'm not going to say that food is as bad as crack cocaine, but it's qualitatively similar in the sense that we throughout the course of history have increasingly concentrated the active ingredients in foods that release dopamine in our brain. So it used to be thousands of years ago, if you wanted to have fat, that was part of a whole food. It was part of nuts or it was part of meat or it was part of some other whole food. If you wanted to have sugar, that was going to be part of fruit, maybe sometimes honey. Today, those same substances, we have pure fat that you can buy for dirt cheap in the grocery store, all kinds of cooking oils and butter and stuff. We have pure crystalline sugar. We have pure crystalline salt. We have pure crystalline monosodium glutamate. So basically all of these things that cause dopamine to release in the brain, we have purified them to the maximum extent and then use use them as ingredients in cooking, combining them together in ways that make our dopamine go up more than they ever did. And so we're essentially experiencing more motivation and more pleasure probably from our food than than our ancestors, than our distant ancestors did. And so our eating drive is correspondingly higher. And it's kind of, you know, obvious that we like that, you know, that kind of by definition, we like it this way because that's what causes us more 
motivation and more pleasure in our eating, uh, in our eating, but at the same time, and it's not something we want to give up. You know, once you've experienced the best, you don't want to go back down usually to something that's not as good. So, you know, we've become accustomed to having this constant entertainment of the palate on every plate. But that's, you know, if you look at hunter-gatherer diets, the way our ancestors would have lived for thousands and millions of years, their diets were really simple. I mean, they were just eating plain cooked tubers, plain fruit, plain meats, and plain nuts. You know, they weren't like sauteing things and putting salt and sugar and, you know, all these other ingredients and cooking methods. They just didn't have those available. And so we essentially have a greater eating drive uh, because of this, and it becomes more challenging to then go back down to simpler foods for people. That's something that people have to kind of build up to and have a motivational drive to do. Um, however, I think an, a key concept here is differentiating between pleasure and satisfaction because I think that there are simple foods, simple whole foods that can be very satisfying and they're not necessarily going to give you that big dopamine hit like ice cream does. But nevertheless, after a meal, you could still feel satisfied to the point where you're not wanting to eat any additional foods. So thank you so much for tuning in today. If we helped you in any way, then click the subscribe button and let's keep hanging out together. We have so much more to share with you. And if you need more information on actually making the switch for good, please visit us at switchforgood.org for loads of info. And you can subscribe to our mailing list where you will receive all sorts of super cool gifts, discount codes to our very fave dairy-free products, and a lifetime of powerful health tips. So join us on the journey to switch for good. This is the future. <laughs>